Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, it's Gabriel Romani. Every time we talk about intimacy, it's considered taboo. People's eyebrows go up and people's ears tune in. Some people say, wow, this is something that we need to talk about. Others say, wow, how dare you talk about these things. So when it comes to intimacy, yes, it is a very critical yet sensitive topic. Why? Because it's the most intimate aspect of a relationship. It is lovemaking that produces love, which is children. It is the thing that bonds husband and wife. What nikah makes halal, one of the things. But today I'm going to talk to you about, by request from parents, what about intimacy and intimacy education when it comes to our kids? What, when, how should we approach this issue? And why is this a problem? Why is this being brought up by parents? Because we live in a very hyper-sexualized society where intimacy is being talked about in movies, in songs, pretty much all over the place. And our own Muslim children living in the West, right, going to school, dealing with different cultures, different backgrounds of different colleagues, friends, whatever they have, definitely the topic will come up definitely they will know certain things about it and a lot of times because the taboo in our cultures and uh, sadly the, the big distance between the parents and their children they're not comfortable the parents themselves are not comfortable to, comfortable to talk about it and of course the kids the children themselves do not want to talk about it oh mom what do you mean oh dad i don't want to talk about this oh my god it's disgusting but of course they're interested they, they inquire about it. They go and search online. They are exposed sometimes to pornography, a material. You have their friends bringing in the school pictures and so on. Their bodies are changing, getting closer to puberty or hitting puberty. And of course, they, they want to understand themselves. They want to understand the desires. So how does a Muslim family, husband and wife, tackle this issue? Can they have what's called you know, education on intimacy? And the answer is yes. If we look at the culture of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, we find a very interesting proof that can be used as a proof in their social dynamics. They used to get married very early, meaning that they would be exposed to intimacy very early. The concept of it, Aisha radiallahu anha, when she got married to the Prophet ﷺ, to, consume, uh, to consummate the marriage anyway, when it came time to it, the women, the older women, of that area took her in and prepared her and, and so on we find in some hadith they will say you'll not marry her until i take her for a day or two and prepare her you know for the marriage night so they used to take pride in this preparation we find that the sahaba used to get married early the process used to encourage the shabab the youth to get married early meaning that their youth used to be exposed to intimacy very early Hence, they would need some kind of education around it or some kind of knowledge that would come from the elders, from those who are experienced. Throughout the Quran and the Sunnah, we find that there are uh, many instances where it talks about rights of intimacy and so on in regards to nikah, to divorce and so on. So it's not something taboo, sadly, as people think it is. But of course, we have to be respectful how we talk about it. Now, what do we do? Fast forwarding to the 21st century, here we are dealing with being attacked from one side with pornography, non-Muslims, the way they look at intimacy. You're a loser if you're still a virgin when you're a teenager. Many of these issues come up and parents are scared. What should we do? How can we approach this issue? What can we tell them? So first and foremost, brothers and sisters, parents, you need to open up the subject. You need to br bring this up. Fathers with boys, this is the best and mothers with daughters in the context of a discussion to the point where you say, look, I'm your friend. You don't have to worry about judgment. I need to understand you. I was your age one time and this is part of our faith and there's nothing to be ashamed of. The kids will kind of fight at the beginning saying like, oh my God, this is disgusting. I don't want to talk about it. Almost like they don't know what's going on and they don't want to deal with it. You need to insist. You need to reassure them that you are their friend, their protector. You need to reassure them this is part of the tarbiyah and that one day they'll get married. 
can be sooner, can be later, but they need to know. And you also need to tell them that there's a lot of vice out there, a lot of problems, and you don't want them to be exposed to the wrong information. So it's better that you as a parent discuss this. That bond, the friendship amongst, you know, between the parent and the child is very important. They have to feel like they can trust you. If you're just coming from above, just judging him all the time, arguing, fighting, there's no connection between the father and the son, the mother and the daughter, the father and the daughter and mother and the son. It will be very hard for both parties to open up to this discussion. So you have to build to that. While you're a new parent, you have to build to this together, inshallah, to reach that status where you can have this discussion comfortably. I've read have my children talk to me about these issues than other you know friends who are not Muslims or who are corrupt or anything like that. So I make sure I build the relationship where we reach the point we're comfortable to talk about this thing. Now you can introduce the topic based on like, look, I know what's going on or some event that takes place that you're both exposed. Let's say something happens in the news. Let's say by mistake, something is shown on TV. Let's say something happens in the school. That is a perfect teachable moment where you can say, you know what? Let's talk about this. No shame in it. Let's talk about it. What happened? What is this? What is right? What is wrong? What is the importance of it and what is not? This is not an act to be ashamed of, yet it is an act that can be shameful when it becomes a sin, right? So the parent has to bring context in, has to bring what does the Quran and the Sunnah talk about? It? What does the Prophet do? How do we protect ourselves? How do we enjoy this thing? What are the reasons? What are the limitations? Where is marriage coming to place? And so on and so forth. So this has to be a very open discussion. Look for those teachable moments. Look for those teachable moments. Tell them, I know what's going on in your school. I know what's going on in society. You know what's going on. Let's not beat around the bush. Sometimes you have to be very direct. They're going to laugh. They're going to giggle a little bit, but it's going to get down to it. And maybe you're going to have to do it more than once till you build that trust and that comfort level where the child can say like, you know what? I need to talk about this. Don't give up at the first attempt. You're going to have to take a few different attempts. In education, again, we always emphasize on that teachable moment. Is it when there's, it means basically there's context to that's conducive to that discussion. Something has happened. Something triggered the ability or the opportunity to have the discussion on that subject, right? You can't be talking about food and all of a sudden you're going to say, hey, how about we talk about intimacy? No, something happened. Something was brought forth, something in the media, whatever it is. And now you're saying, you know what? Let's talk about this. What do you think? Look, this, this is what the Prophet said about this. And do not feel shy when it comes to this. It might take an extra step and another meeting where you start discussing some of the biological implications that they're going to learn in school anyway. It's better they learn it from you so they understand. The you know, funny question, right? Where do babies come from? Right? Kids ask that. They think about that. They hear from here and there. You sometimes need to explain that properly. Kids know that parents are intimate. They hear, they see, they're not, you know, dumb. They understand that something is going on. Again, they're exposed to so much intimacy around in society that it's not like they're absent-minded when it comes to this issue. So have the discussion. Again, transparent, direct, build trust, and just make it like it's not judgmental, but yet it is tarbiyah based or you are trying to teach them something that is very valuable. It's something important. Don't make it sound like something dirty. It is dirty only when people step out of the line of Islam and the limitations of Islam. Let them know that this is something great. It is love that actually yields or produces love. Out of the love of the two, of the husband and the wife, the love you, the child, has, Allah has created you. You know, kun fayakun. But it's through this process, this sabab, this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought you on this earth as, you know, so love, you know, kind of gives love. Let them feel that this is something that they will look forward to and that this is something that's beautiful. This is something that is not dirty. Dirty is what these people do and we are not them. Okay, they are the ones who have spoiled this thing. No, we will take the, cl the cleanliness of it and the good parts of it and we will love it and accept it. But it needs education. It needs for people to understand. It needs to, they need to understand what happens and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has not allowed zina. And what is zina? And why society commits zina? Why there's no more love and compassion and commitment through marriage? And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, we go through the stories of the Quran, we talk about the wives of the Prophet and that relationship has to be contextualized. You have to connect to those stories. It's not just theory, this is pure life. Have that discussion. Now, the question is, when? How early? Well, I would say before puberty. What are the signs of puberty? Well, they're different for boys than girls. The parents should notice difference in behavior. The girls are starting to mature, of course. Moms can tell, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Boys are also developing slowly facial hair, changing voice. You know, they're gonna wake up, they might have a wet dream. Talk about wet dreams. Talk about the fact that you have to have ghusl. Talk about what happens in this wet dream. Do not be shy. The Prophet said, whoever shy will not learn the deen. So make sure the discussion can happen as early as 10, 11. Some mature faster. Girls usually mature and hit puberty faster. So mothers have to be on point. Look also at their interest. Try to, it's not about spying, but it's about trying to understand patterns and behaviors of children when it comes to their likes and dislikes. Be careful that no one beats you to the race. Meaning, don't ever allow or delay where they're going to finally, where they're going to get their baseline understanding information from somewhere else. You need to beat it. So you need to be very careful as a parent to say, okay, I think my daughter now is kind of looking at boys or catch these things. I think my son is looking at girls. I see some change in behavior when he's around girls or when he sees girls or vice versa. I think it's time for me to have that discussion. And again, you're going to do it step by step. You're going to introduce the concept. You're going to build the trust. You're going to make it comfortable. Then you're going to go step further, further, further in describing things, understanding what's halal, what's haram, the issues of wet dreams, the issue of ghusl, of praying and salah and so on. So, of course, the Prophet ﷺ told us about salah by the age of, age of 10. I would say that around the same time, because you're accountable now, you're responsible, children can start learning about intimacy. Parents have to do this. Our educational systems right now in the West and in the East, it's not just about the curriculum and what's being put in it. You can see in the West what kind of things are being put in it. But even in the East, even in Muslim countries, the influence is so much. So you got the peers and the friends that are bringing in education and you know putting in information. Then you have the curriculum itself. So you're being bombarded from both sides. So you as a parent have to take that lead, you and your wife, husband and wife, to talk about it. You talk about this, I talk about that. You talk to the girls, I talk to the boys. Very important. Last but not least, talk about the issue of haram, LGBTQT, because that's a huge part of sexuality and the sexual movement today. You need to make sure you tell them that this is what is allowed. Just because this might feel or that might pull interesting, it might feel like, hey, let me look into it. That does not mean that you follow that, you know, curiosity. Be careful. Explain to them that that can change your mind. It can change your, your body and it can affect you for life. Talk to them about that is wrong. It's something that you don't go towards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you put Adam and Eve in Jannah, he told them, don't go close to that tree, right? Tell them not always about just positives, positive. No, the negatives have to be explained as well. Why? Because I say so. No, because this is the sunnah of Allah. So explain to them that this homosexuality issue, lesbianism, this is not something. It's being pushed. Explain to them the propaganda. Explain to them the context. Explain to them the war of ideologies that's taking place. They do understand. You might think that, oh, they're just kids. I don't know. They're just my little babies. They don't understand anything. No, they do understand. Don't undermine that. Make sure they understand that there is a war of ideologies and let them not fall prey. That they have to arm themselves and protect themselves with the correct ideas, the correct iman and aqidah to protect themselves and their progeny, uh, to have a proper life, to have the correct God-given life between husband and wife, the love and love making and intimacy between husband and wife, not a man and something else and a woman and something else. Because these days, it's not just a woman, a woman, man, a man. It can be all kinds of other things, right? There's no limits to what these people will do. But we have to emphasize then that in Islam, there's limits. The Prophet ﷺ told, Al-Halal Bayn wal Haram Bayn. This is, the Halal is clear and the Haram is clear. And between them, there's doubtful matters. Stay away from that. Protect your faith, your, you know. And he says that 
every king has its his limits and the limits of Allah are the muharramat what Allah has made haram so hold on to these things they need to understand that you need to not be shy when it comes this because the enemy of Islam are not shy they are pushing every single day forward aggressively and guess what the praise are our children so we need to save our children by having these discussions proper manners proper adab with correct understanding and build that relationship i want my kids to consider me not only as a father but as someone that they can get advice to they can value my experience and they can come to they feel comfortable just like that young man came to the prophet sallallahu telling him that he's done something haram with that girl except for the last part he didn't hit home base right so and he he was comfortable why why because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was approachable you have to be approachable and to do that you have to build it you have to build the trust you have to build it by your behavior by your you know everything a context everything that you do so parents be approachable may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and protect us okay talk about the issue of intimacy assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh